Today we're looking at angle properties within circles as part of the National 5 course. In this short clip what we're looking at is uh, just working out angles and looking at the angle properties. And in another clip what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Pythagoras theorem and trig ratios within the, uh, the circle as well. Right, let's go ahead with this and we'll look at some of the, uh, the key parts or the key um, properties that we're going to have to learn. We're going to have to understand them and remember them when we come up against questions like this. Right, first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at um, a circle, we're going to look at radii uh, forming isosceles triangles. So that's the first thing I'm going to look at here. So, if I've got the centre here, um, the radius for the circle can be from here to here, it can be from there to there, from there to there, from there to there, or anywhere around about the circumference of that circle. And that's quite important for some of the questions that you get, because sometimes you have to think about moving a line uh, to form a triangle. First of all, let's just go ahead and we'll look at this property. So if I draw, there's a radius there, so that's going to be the radius. If I draw another radius, just coming out from here, and what I'll do is I'll just draw it out to there. Okay. That's a radius there. So these sizes are the same size, and I know that if I draw this line across at the bottom here, that there gives me a triangle. So within that triangle there, the angle down at the bottom here and the bottom here, they're going to be the exact same, because it's a, an isosceles triangle. These two sides are the same size, these two angles the same size. So that property there is one that we're going to have to need to use um, when we're trying to solve some of the angle questions that are here. Now if I just do something else here, I'm going to draw a straight line down to there. Okay. This line here is uh, called a chord, it's a chord of the circle, and wherever the radius meets the chord, it meets at right angles. And again, that's going to be one of the properties that we're going to be using as we work through this section. Next one, uh, we've got uh, angles in the semicircle. So, what does that mean? So, let's draw the diameter. So, there's the diameter there. And if I forget about this side of the circle, first of all, I've got a semicircle on the left-hand side. And from there, if I take a line from either side of the diameter, there we go. There's a property that these always meet at right angles, no matter where I'm going to draw that line. So if I draw over here, from there to there, and draw from that side of the diameter back up to here, again, that meets at right angles. And no matter how sharp I draw that line, it's always going to meet, even if I do it right to there, from there to there, always meets at right angles. And again, that's a property that I'm going to use, and I know that if I've got right angle triangles either here or here, then Pythagoras theorem or trig ratios are going to come into play. Right, the, the tangent. Tangent to a circle. So if I draw a line that's just going to touch the circle at one point, so that's going to be a tangent. So, uh, that there. So that's a tangent to this circle here. Okay. And wherever I've got a tangent, a line that's just touching the circle at one place, so it's touching about here, if I join a line from the centre of the circle to there, I'm going to form a right angle. So again, another uh, property that we're going to have to remember. Again, if I draw a line from the centre and out to a point on that tangent, you can see again there's a right angle triangle, so that again is going to be... Uh, a property that I'm going to need to use for trig ratios and also Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so there is one other property that uh, we're going to have to remember, uh, and that property will be if I draw the diameter in here. So there's my diameter coming straight across, and I've got a line that's crossing here. This angle that's from here to here will equal 180 degrees. So the angles in a straight line are going to add up to 180 and that's going to be important when I try to find missing angles across the centre of the circle. So that's a property that I'm going to have to remember as well. And remember, angles in a triangle all add up to 180 degrees. So as a reminder, 
here's the things that you're going to have to remember. Okay. So there we've got our radii for my isosceles triangles. The angle in the in the a semicircle is a right angle. Okay. Tangent. When we've got a tangent, then the uh, for the tangent the uh, radius uh, will form a right angle at the point of contact. This one here, a key one, straight angle, or an angle across uh, a point, is going to give me 180 degrees, and the sum of triangles, uh, sum of angles in a triangle, 180 degrees. Okay. Right. Let's go ahead and look at uh, solving some of the the problems that you might be faced with here. Okay. Right, so, so let's look at uh, A. We've got AB as the diameter and we're finding the missing angles within these uh, questions here. So first one here, I know that there's an angle in a semicircle. Okay. I know that this is going to be uh, right angles here. So that's 90 degrees here. And what I've got left at this side here, if I add my, triangles, uh, my angles up to 180, that's going to give me 45 degrees. Over here on B, again I can see that's uh, an angle in a semicircle. And what I'd like you to do is just freeze the video and just try and uh, work through these questions. I'll be doing them pretty quickly, just after a short pause. Right then, so angle here, that's going to be 90 degrees. Angle in a semicircle, and what I've got left is 55 degrees for that angle there. On to C. What I have is a right angle here, that's going to be 90 degrees, so although this is a more complicated looking uh, uh, diagram here, I've just got two semicircles either side of the diameter, and I'm just going to work out the angles from there. So if this one here is 90 degrees, then what I have here is going to be 43 degrees. Again, lines coming from either side of the diameter, 90 degrees here. If that's 90 degrees, I'm going to add these together, subtract them from 180, and find out that this is going to be 18 degrees here. Same again here, okay? This side here of the circle, semicircle. This side here, semicircle. And I'll just deal with them separately. Right, I know that this one here is 27 degrees, and I'm going to give that right angle based on the semicircle uh, property. 90 degrees there, and that's going to be 63 degrees up at the top. This triangle here, I've been given this as 12 degrees. This here is 90 degrees, and that would leave me with 78 degrees down at the bottom here. So there's my uh, angles in the, the semicircle. Let's move on pretty quickly. Right, I've got three questions here, and I'm going to use the uh, symmetry properties of a circle to find the missing uh, angles that are in here. Okay, so remember that uh, what we have is uh, two radii will form an isosceles triangle, so there'll be symmetry around about the diameter, and also I know that uh, meeting this chord across the bottom here, uh, there's going to be right angles in here, and that's going to help me to work out the, the missing angles. So from the left hand side, if I just look at what's in here, right angled triangle, 50 and 90, added together, subtract that from 180, gives me 40 degrees there. Using symmetry, this will be 40 degrees over on this side, and this one over here, 50 degrees, just being symmetrical. Again, I can see symmetry across the diameter here. I've been given 57 degrees there, so if I'm going to try and add these angles up to 180, I'll uh, add 90 and 57 and subtract it from 180. And I should get uh, 33 degrees. By symmetry, D will be equal to 33 degrees and F will be equal to 57 degrees. Okay, the final one here. Okay, I've got uh, a more complex diagram, but if I just look at it, what I've got is at the bottom here, I've got an isosceles triangle. Okay, so I know there's symmetry involved, and I know that I've got some triangles with right angles in them, and from there I can work out some of the values. And all I'm going to do is just chase the angles around about the diagram to try and solve this, uh, this uh, diagram here. 
Right, so let's go for it. Uh, 28 degrees here, 90 degrees there. So what I would have left would be 52 degrees. So that would be 52, or is that 62 degrees? Yeah, 62 degrees there. Okay, so by symmetry, 62 degrees, and symmetry, 28 degrees over here. Now there's one of the properties that I'd mentioned about the angles in a straight line. So that there is going to be 180. If I've already used 62, then that will be 118 here. Okay, 118 degrees. If I then look at uh, this triangle here, so the big one on the left hand side, so if I look at that from there to there, here to there, okay, and from here to here, that there is an isosceles triangle. So I know that the angles at the bottom of the isosceles triangle are going to be the same. So 118, okay, and if I subtract that from 180, that leaves me with 62. So I'm going to share 62 between these two angles here. So that will give me an angle in there of 31 degrees and an angle in there of 31 degrees. So all I'm going to do then is I'm going to use symmetry to work out the angles over here. So they're all going to be the same as the triangle over on the side here. So that's going to be 31 degrees and that's going to be 31 degrees there. So that's again the property of isosceles triangles and also the, the property of the angles in a straight line adding up to 180. Let's look at this one here, okay, just the angles, and what we're looking at here is a tangent to the circle, yeah. and what we've got is we're going to meet at 90 degrees for the point of contact between there and the radius. So what we have is the diameter right across here, and we've got some problems to solve on this page, just using the, the tangent uh, property. So if that's 90 degrees, that's 70, that must leave me with 20 degrees there to make them all add up to 180 within the triangle. I'll, uh, you can freeze the video and try the last three questions that are here and see how you get on. I'll answer them just after a quick pause. Right, here we go. Right, so first thing that I'm looking at to solve here will be this angle here. So I'm going to look at E first of all. Okay, so I know that the angles in uh, a straight line are going to be 180 degrees. If that's 120, this is going to be 60 degrees there. If I know that's 60 degrees and that's 90, what I've got left is 30 degrees for there. This angle here, if I've got 90 there, and I know that the angles in a straight line are 180, this must be 90 degrees here as well. Okay, for C, right, so what I can do here is I know that uh, the tangent property this is going to be a right angle, so that's going to be 90 degrees. If that's 90 degrees, all I need to do is to add up to 180, and that's going to give me 25 degrees that's in here. So what I'll do is I'll just use symmetry. So I can see there's a symmetry involved here again. So that's going to be 65 degrees, this one 25 degrees, and that one there is a right angle at 90 degrees. For D, Okay, last question. We're just going to be using uh, a couple of properties here again. So we've got the, the tangent property, okay, where it meets the point of contact and from the radius to the point of contact, set its circle centre to the, the, the point of contact, we're going to meet at right angles. Right angle there, right angle at this side here as well. If I know that's 35 degrees and that's 90 degrees, add them together, subtract them from 180, and what I've got is about 55 degrees. About 45 degrees over this side here, 45 and 90, add it together, subtract them away from 180, and that would leave me again here with a 45 degree angle. So that's all the, the questions I'm going to do just with, uh, with angles. Just got to look at some of the properties, work out from the properties the, the missing angles, and uh, from there that should, should keep you in a and in good stead from uh, this type of work. Just try and remember, what you've got to do is uh, remember the properties that we discussed early. So what we've got is the radii form uh, isosceles triangles, okay? 
so angles at the bottom are the same. Right angles here where uh, the, the a line from the radius meets the chord. Angles in the semicircle, okay. Angles in the semicircle. Right angle here wherever it touches the circumference of the circle. Tangents to the circle. I'm going to meet there at 90 degrees. Angles in the triangle add up to 180. Straight line, property 180 degrees. Okay. Hope this has helped out with uh, the angles work for you.